and uh, we're with you on two. Hey, Chell, it's Mark Kelly. How are you? How are you guys doing? Senator Kelly, it's great to hear your voice, and uh, great to, I, I believe you've got uh, a whole group there in MCC, and we're really glad that you all could come to visit and say hi. Yeah, I got a bunch of interns. Uh, some of them up are in the seats. I've got four of them here with me, and they've got a few questions for you if you have some time for that. Sounds great. We're ready. Hi, this is Alec Creel at Rice University. This is thrilling to be able to talk with you all today. Uh, what words of encouragement can you all offer in the age of Artemis, especially for younger students, as we look forward to expanding humanity's presence on other worlds? It's a great question. It's a super exciting time. Um, the, as you say, the age of Artemis, um, we have multiple uh, vehicles being flown right now. Um, we came up, as um, as you know, on a SpaceX Crew Dragon, our Dragon Freedom. Um, we also, while we've been up here, we had the uh, Boeing uh, OFT mission, successfully a DACA Starliner. So we've got uh, both of those um, in, in rotation. We also have um, the Soyuz as well, um, getting people up here to the ISS, um, like our, our Russian cosmonauts. Um, and then, as you mentioned, we're also um, working on the Artemis program. So I'm um, super excited to, to see Artemis 1 kick off um, and the, the follow-on missions that will ensue. Um, so we definitely, in terms of words of encouragement, um, you are, are entering at the right time. Um, it is a super exciting time in, in human spaceflight, right? Right now, and we need all of you. We need all of your, um, all of your passion, all of your energy, all of your expertise. Um, and as we look to the future, um, we are just going to need you all to, to help infiltrate the, the workforce and uh, help inspire us to continue to uh, explore and continue to do these hard things. All right. Um, hello, my name is Madison Clark. I am born in Arizona and raised in Hawaii, and I go to Arizona State University. My question for you is, do you view humanity differently once you have left Earth? Hey, that's, a, uh, that's a good question. It's one we get uh, fairly often. Um, and I, I think maybe you would find across the astronaut corps anyway that, you know, we're such an international collaboration here uh, on the International Space Station with, you know, so many countries being involved uh, that we all see ourselves as one anyway. Uh, what I will say is that being up here certainly reinforces that, though. Uh, you know, we look out and, uh, you know, to me, the most beautiful thing that we look at when we look out the uh, uh, out the window, uh, why you might say Mars, uh, but uh, I would say I would say it's Earth, and you know we're this uh, tiny little island of life, uh, you know, amidst the blackness of space out there right now, and you know, so once you once you look at it in that context, and you realize that we're all living on spaceship Earth, and uh, we're all kind of part of the same crew, uh, it, it gives you certainly a different uh, perspective on um, on our place and our relationships with each other, and so I think a lot of us come into that with that kind of perspective, but it's reinforced by uh, by being up here and being part of the uh, the huge team that makes the space station happen. Hi, uh, this is Ian Fernandez. Um, I'm from San Antonio, Texas, and um, I go to Princeton University. And I'm currently working on a software program with the Space Radiation Analysis Group um, to predict the occurrence of radiation-inducing um, space weather events like uh, ma major solar flares and coronal mass ejections. So what I was wondering was, um, what are some of the effects that such radiation concerns have on astronaut life aboard the International Space Station? And what type of role do you think space radiation will play going forward as we embark on longer-term missions to Mars and onwards? Thank you. Yeah, that's a great question. We actually saw the effects of some of that radiation this past week uh, with increased aurora activity. It's absolutely beautiful, but it's also a reminder that there's uh, that we're being exposed to increased radiation as a result of that. Um, Thankfully, we still, here in low Earth orbit, we're still under the Van Allen belts. We still um, are protected uh, in great part from galactic cosmic radiation and many solar part particle uh, types of radiation as well. I don't think that we really think about radiation all that. We know we're getting a higher exposure, but uh, we don't have to think about it quite as much as when our explorers venture to the moon and go on to Mars. And certainly uh, outside of the protection of uh, the Earth's geomagnetic influence and um, the Van Allen belt, radiation is a serious concern both for um, short-term and long-term effects. And uh, so I think that's one of the things that we're still working on as we think about that, uh, that exploration, that long trip to Mars and back. 
and uh, we certainly appreciate uh, your work in the in, um, in space radiation group. And uh, we need um, bright engineers, uh, physicians, researchers to help us uh, continue to solve this problem as uh, we continue to venture outward. Hi, this is Priscilla Nazir from Texas A&M University. And my question is, what was going through your mind during your first launch, and how have those feelings changed through your launch thus far? Yeah, it's such an interesting question because it, it was definitely quite different for me. Um, the first launch for me was like this this moment of concentrated significance. It was the end point of years of preparation and training and in a broad sense something that I had looked forward to and worked towards all my life. Uh, and it was also the beginning of this new life I had not experienced yet in space station, this extraterrestrial life. Uh, and so I experienced it like that, very, very much focused on the present. Uh, I, I thought that I would be maybe a little bit afraid at the moment of launch, but I think that I was just so happy that that sheer happiness didn't leave any space for for fear or worry, and uh, you know I was just uh, open to the experience and and incredibly happy. Uh, and the second time I was of course equally happy, uh, maybe less overwhelmed by the emotions and more aware of the details and of, of what was I was experiencing, and I was even just Jotting down notes because I, I really wanted to remember all the details of, of that amazing experience, which is very short. I mean, the launch is less than nine minutes, you know, from in, in both cases, both my first and second launch. Um, and so it, it's such an, an intense but short experience that you want to remember all the details. Thank you, uh, Samantha. This is Mark Kelly again, and Chell, and Bob, and Jessica. Thanks for taking the time uh, out of your day to do this for these uh, interns, which are, as you said, are so important uh, to you know fill these jobs after you know folks like me, and eventually, you know, all of you guys move on to something else. It's uh, great that we have you know really smart and uh, you know folks coming from universities, uh, you know, not only across the country but from other countries as well. Uh, so thanks for taking your time today, and I'm going to turn it back over to the Capcom. Subscribe for more space. space, 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 space.